Welcome to my review and thoughts on 2023's The Flash. So, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I loved. The video will have some jokes and I will get into some serious topics. And, yeah, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. Please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier DCEU films. And as soon as, soon as I'm the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, let's get right into... And there we go. Yes, so this movie is rated PG-13. There are a couple of times where it really pushes that, so, you know, be aware of that if that's something that might bother you. I feel like it, it uses the rating fairly well. Now, the... Yeah, so I read comics between 1999 and 2007, and let's see, yeah, so the, the yeah, ranking all of the DCEU movies worst to best, Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman 1984, Snyder Cut, 2016 Suicide Squad, 2017 Justice League, Man of Steel, Black Adam, and then the ones I, I really love, Wonder Woman 1, Aquaman, Jazam 1, Birds of Prey, and 2021 Suicide Squad, and I just realized this list does not have Jazam 2. Um, yeah, moving on. Let's yes, so... I have watched this movie once. I just got done. I started recording this video as soon as I got home from the theater. And yeah, so the the plot. Basically, Barry realizes there might be a chance to save a loved one. And I think that's all I think you should know before going into this. Now, let's yeah, so, the, yes, let's get into the writing. So this was written by Christina Hodson and Joby Harold. Now, Hodson also wrote Birds of Prey, so makes a lot of sense that, you know, I'm, I'm glad she's still, I know that Apparently, they didn't think that movie did well enough. I thought it was excellent, but yeah, it's not for everyone. And Joby Harold, um, well, he wrote some episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. So, not, not the biggest fan, but yeah. And he wrote Army of the Dead, the, the um, Zack Snyder movie. He was one of the writers for that, so let's see. The writing is largely good. Like the the it's a movie that has to explain a lot. There's a lot of things that are a very certain way that has to be explained, and it has to juggle some you know, some some heady concepts and yeah, it, it definitely is the, the, um, yeah, I don't think they always nail it, but you can tell that they put effort in, to, they, they wanted to make sure that they took the, it, it seriously, right, I forget if this is, um, I forget when I usually get into this in the video, but fascinatingly this movie is actually something you can watch without any prior knowledge like I kind of want someone who has no idea who any of these characters are try to watch this because technically 
everything you need to know to to actually be able to follow it it's technically all there like there's nothing if if you think i'm i'm mistaken please put it in the comments i believe that literally everything thing there is just enough like someone says something or there's some kind of visual indication or something but just you know you're not going to get the same thing out of it if you don't but i mean what could you possibly have done to me for me to tell you to watch man of steel and batman v superman you know like that's not right you know the the it's not a movie that really you don't need to certainly you don't need to have watched them recently you don't need to remember them that well now yeah so plot twists they're they're pretty they're pretty good um i would definitely say there were a few of them that you could figure out but i don't think it hurt the movie that much and the direction is handled by Andy Muschietti. And I have not watched his previous work, but I'd like to. Um, he di directed Mama in 2013. Jessica Chastain, Nikolai Castavaldo. <sighs> yeah. A horror movie about... Yeah, actually, yeah, just some some uh, uh, supernatural spirit kind of deal, and just yeah, it sounds really really good. He directed it, chapter one and chapter two, and he's working on Welcome to Dairy, which, based on the name, sounds like it's an it thing. Which, yeah, they really are just milking everything that's like. Yeah, and they're they're he's he's directing the feature adaptation of I I apologize I'm gonna butcher this Hajime Isayama's manga Attack on Titan. Yeah, that's hope he does well. Um, but yeah, so I cannot really compare his direction here. To, to how he handled those others, but noting that most of the other stuff he's done was horror, like, you can see that. There are several times in this where it's like, um, did somebody forget to tell him that this isn't a horror movie? It's, it's kind of like with the first Jazam, you know, it doesn't go quite that far, but there are a couple of points in this where it's like, um, that took a turn. But yeah, he he handles, you know, one of the big things is obviously, can he do this genre, you know, he handles the action pretty well, um, he, you know, the emotion really works in in several of the key points, I'm, I'm not sure I would say all of them, but when the movie really, really needs, yeah, there's some, there's some incredible emotional moments here, and I, I was, I was a little worried if if the movie's gonna handle it, I I wouldn't necessarily say the movie makes a fantastic first impression. Like some of the first stuff is not necessarily some of the best, but you know once it gets going, there's a lot of really really good stuff. And let's see, there was another thing I wanted to say. Um. Yeah, it does, you know, it doesn't feel like he's never done this sort of thing before. Very impressive. Now, Zinnia Jones, I guess by now a week ago, uploaded a video where in transphobes argue against accepting trans people by saying things like they worship the trans god Baphomet and they them is derived from Satan and demon and the latter actually legit got a laugh from, you know, they had to... The, the the person in charge had to be like order you know while probably suppressing a giggle themselves these are of course absurd hateful things to say it must be so nice and easy for your political ideology to rely on ther thought terminating cliches there is no word you could say to make me stop supporting disadvantaged groups 
The LGBT community includes non-binary individuals, but the issue of whether or not to accept the LGBT community is entirely binary. Acceptance, which you should choose, because they're human beings, just like Cisset, or rejection, which is a step on the path to genocide, which some conservatives like Michael Knowles are now openly calling for. I, I almost kind of appreciate the the just like you know for a while is you know occasionally conservatives will pretend that that's not where they're headed but then they'll like sit on their hands during the AIDS crisis and now just openly say you know complete eradication just yeah um now, the Flash is said to be the fastest speedster by some, and certainly, Ezra they them, was able to outrun all the controversy and remain in the lead of this, while Amber Heard, part of a mutually abusive married couple, was fired from Aquaman 2, despite some of the charges Ezra faces are significantly worse than what Heard was found guilty of. But then, she's a woman, Ezra Miller is white passing, cis male passing. Despite this, I have no intention of misgendering Ezra Miller because we have that sort against any LGBTQ individual hurts all LGBTQ individuals. If I at some point in this video misgender them, I assure you it will entirely be by accident. I will say that the fact that Ezra identifies as a member of the community means that they should be more careful to not do the wrong thing because a lot of conservatives are chomping at the bit to say that all LGBTQ people are as guilty as Ezra very clearly is. And this movie has been, they've been making this movie for a very long time now. This is actually the first solo Flash movie in the DCEU continuity, you know. And yes, it does actually retell his origin. So that's, yeah. And, and the, the, yeah, it just, it's. Like, we, we knew... I try not to make videos, like, saying that something's going to be awful before the, the actual movie has come out, and we can see for ourselves with our own eyes. But yeah, they actually... This, this feels like it should be, like, the third Flash solo movie. It does not feel like it should be the first. You know, yeah, he's... You know, he was referenced in the 2015 in, in Batman v Superman, then he was featured prominently in the 2017 Justice League, but in continuity, this is technically only the second movie appearance of him, and we get the origin, and we get this massive stuff that I think I'm going to continue to be vague on, because it's a popular storyline, and no wonder. And, yeah, they've, they've been wanting to... Yeah, I mean, in, in a way, it's almost good that it did take them this long to make this movie, because if this movie had actually come out, like, right after the theatrical cut of Justice League, woof. Now, I find it deeply fascinating that this movie so aggressively doubles down on the Joss Whedon-sounding Flash, considering that it's one of the most hated, least popular aspects of the theatrical cut of Justice League, and... How people suddenly got real quiet about it when the Snyder Cut came out and became clear that that was actually Zack Snyder's edition, since supposedly that movie is made entirely made up of stuff he directed and features those same scenes. Even if you want to say, ah, maybe he was incorrect about that claim. Well, he had final cut. He left those scenes in when, like, it would have been very easy to trim them down. But yeah, someone at Warner Brothers, bless their soul believes in this flash just yeah I keep seeing critics saying there shouldn't be more multiverse movies I agree that hypothetically it's possible to make a bad multiverse movie and I know a lot of people don't like Ant-Man 3 but that one doesn't really use the multiverse very much the ones that dive deep into it like the two Spider-Verse movies everything everywhere all at once you know Endgame, Loki, What If you know these are all amazing and yeah, so I was wondering if this movie was going to be the first multiverse movie to break the trend, and I would definitely say it's probably the least of all of these, but the, the yeah, it's, it's still really, really, really good. 
Now, we've got some critic quotes. So, some say the CGI feels unfinished, especially flashy running during the day. Very true. <laughs> One says it's like Ragnarok and Love and Thunder, especially the latter, with how silly it gets. Very true. The fan service detracts from it being Barry's story. You know, it's. <sighs> This is not the only movie to have fan service like that in this kind of multiverse thing, but it is the one where it detracts. You know, the ones I already mentioned, you know, yeah, other than Ant Man 3, in those, like, the, the fan service, you know, yeah, there's stuff that, that you could definitely say that's technically fan service, but it does to some extent service. The, the story that's being told and the character that it's about where this movie like every so often it just kind of like goes remember that and it's like yeah I do it's it's super cool to see it again I, I, I love that thing but what does this have to do with Barry Allen and and, and I don't think it had to be that way because the the they actually do. The, there's there's this 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 scene with with some exchange of of like dialogue and such that actually does work to to center Barry, you know. So so at least some of the time, but other times it is just like, yeah. Now, let's see. right, another critic uh, quote. As much as I enjoy the multiverse-themed storytelling in The Flash, Machete's attempt to blend comedy, action, drama, and sci-fi tends to be erratic and sometimes feels awkwardly misplaced in some scenes. This is especially true with the comedy parts that either go too broad or juvenile. Very true. And some have said, too little of every character other than Barry, who there's too much of, so that's, yeah. And it is... You know, it is this thing, like, the DCEU has always had a problem. I, I find that the, the best DC movies, first of all, are not the ones that are technically in the DCU, but anyway, the, 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 um, I think the DCEU is at its best when it isn't trying to be the MCU, like, when they when it just goes for really dark stuff like i mentioned birds of prey and the suicide squad you know the, the james gunn suicide squad both excellent and they don't feel like they're just trying to yeah you know but yeah the the stuff that does where where it feels too close to the mcu and the the snyderverse like i I do respect some of Zack Snyder's work. Uh, I do think he has a really bad habit of not quite understanding the the like why a character is considered iconic or or sometimes an entire comic story. You know that right? That's a thing. Um, yeah, I think if you if you love the Snyderverse, there is some stuff in this movie that is for you but it definitely is trying to you know yeah the movie really doubles down on the the Ezra Miller uh, uh, Barry Allen flash you know and that definitely does yeah you know, if if the yeah, if you find that version really frustrating, there are a couple of times where the movie itself will like be yeah, I know, super frustrating, but he is technically the lead character. You know, and there are parts of the movie where he isn't so aggressively irritating. You know, so that does help. Now, I am, uh, right, the, the, um, I will say, the opening does a good job setting up, like, basically, you know, it's, it's fairly basic stuff at this point, you know, he's 
he's got he has an alter ego that means that he can't you know show up on time and put in as much work as others expect him to you know he feels like things aren't quite going as he would like and he has the the you know personal tragedy now let's see right so i'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending but you know the ending fits what came before and there's definitely like the ending yes i would say by and large it is great the the not everything about the third act is but the ending itself the very ending is is great if like if if around the midpoint of this movie you're feeling like okay is this really going to get as you know it gets kind of out there but the ending you know if you're if you are invested in these characters yes the 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 ending is is very it's it's a it works, you know, it is, I'm, um, yeah. And, let's see. Right, so, the, the cast, um, yeah, I don't think I have more to say about Ezra Miller. I, I honestly, I, I don't think I've seen them in anything that isn't DCEU. I used to, people used to tell me, that I should check out their other work, but, you know, now it's like, do we really want to support them? But, yeah. Right, there's actually a bunch of these that I cannot really talk too much about without spoilers. I will just briefly say, um, Maribel Verdu plays Nora Allen, Barry's mother, and I almost feel bad for her because she's not, there's not really a lot of, like, the role doesn't require a lot of, a lot of depth, but, you know, it's basically that the, the, she is the, the mother that, you know, when you think back to your childhood, if you had a, a sweet mother at least, you know, it's, it's almost like, it, you know, I, I say of the, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies that Uncle Ben and Aunt May are basically like, you know, they, they, they're they a Hallmark card come to life. You know, there's no, there's not really any, yeah, anyway. Um, it's especially bad in the very first movie. Anyway, yeah, the, the... You know, there's not a lot of depth to this character, but the, yeah, she does really do a, you know, yeah, she's, she's, re I imagine there's a lot of people who, like, as soon as this movie ends, they're gonna, like, call their mom and be like, are you okay? I feel like we haven't talked in a while. Like, this is, this is definitely a movie that really gets to, to, you know. It's not that I don't love my mother. It's that if if I were to try to contact her, I would need a Ouija board. Kiersey Clemens returns as Iris West and thankfully gets a lot more to do here. I, yeah, I am not going to talk about my feelings about her in the Snyder Cut. Because, you know, yeah, what it boils down to is I really felt like it was a complete waste. The The... I get it. She's supposed to be big in later stuff. But, like, it just... Yeah. Here, she actually gets... You know, she has a character. She has lines. And the the chemistry between her and Ezra is pr pretty good. And I think that is pretty much what I will say about let's see yeah I will I will just say that at least one of the the actors who appears in this who does a 
a character that people really want to see does some really amazing acting. And yeah, the some of the dialogue is definitely basically white noise. It's basically just like jingling keys to to you know out of fear that some of the younger audience members are gonna like their eyes are gonna glaze over at some of the more complex stuff. But some of the dialogue is actually really, really well written and well delivered. And, you know, yeah, you've got some really talented actors really making a meal out of some stuff. Uh, you know, some, some of the actors don't have a lot of dialogue, but what little they have, they really make it count. The cinematography is, is good. There's some really, like, there's, there's one run of of berries where he runs for like a while and like because of the special effects like it's not it's obviously not actually one long unbroken shot but it's made out to look like it is and that's pretty cool and and just yeah you know it is the kind of thing where like hypothetically if someone in real life could run that fast yeah you you kind of would have you would want to just frame them in the camera and just film them running, you know. So, yeah, I, I like that. It's a neat idea. There's some there's some great stuff where, you know, some some of it is very very tight and like claustrophobic. Other other times the the cinematography is wide open and and overpowering in that way actually. The editing is is largely good, and certainly there's a lot of the stuff that really needs to be there in order for the fun for for the film to function. Most of that is there. Now, I, I will say there's you know there's some stuff in the movie where, like I yeah ultimately it's probably it's more it's a writing issue not an editing issue but there's at least one part where it kind of felt like i mean ultimately I, it didn't waste a lot of screen time but it did kind of feel like you know is it is it even necessary to go there because it's undone immediately now this hold on there we go so yeah, this was, you know, in addition to being filmed in studio, some of this was also shot on location in, in England, and they got good use out of locations, and let's see, yeah, and the, and some really great settings, um, this is one of those, you know, it's it's a big blockbuster movie, you know, today those do have, you know, they tend to have a lot of settings, you know, this is mandated, but it feels natural for this one. Um, among other things, there is a, you know, Barry is looking for something very specific and he has to, as, along the search, he goes multiple different places, you know. This is a fine enough explanation. And they picked some great locations, you know, the, the yeah, it's, it's, you know, there are so many of these movies now. So you really want to make sure that you, you know, you have something incredibly memorable. And I would say that some of the locations in this are really, really memorable. And, yeah, and, and some of them look very distinctly different from each other. You know, I, I... Some of these movies look too similar because of desaturation. But this movie, like, there's a... Um, I mean, yeah, I already mentioned there's there's some where it's like very claustrophobic and 
yeah, it legitimately does feel like just they they yeah, it's 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 very cool and some other parts of the movie are are much more open and and the action I would definitely say the fact that the special effects are not always like I honestly I think they must just straight up not have been finished like I I don't actually know too much about how the how Warner Brothers are handling that aspect but you know it has now come out that Disney has been pushing their effect people too hard you know changing their mind at the last second or and yeah in addition to changing their mind at the last second which is why Ant-Man 3 doesn't look better than it does and I must imagine it it must be something similar here because like yeah um so yeah that you know that's unfortunate but there are some really there's some great choreography to the action and some really great little gags where like it's stuff that you could you could you could really understand where like it's coming from how how did the the filmmakers arrive at this particular idea and it's one of those things where it's like oh because of the ah, I see you that's good you know that that kind of thing you know it's it's very very clear that some of the people who worked on this big time comic book geeks you know they they actually wanted to put some of the stuff that you usually have to go to the comics for that you don't find very much in these movies you know so so yeah that was that was really really cool and yeah the the action scenes are fairly varied the 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 settings and choreography and yeah they do a good job with those and Yeah, uh, at least one of the antagonists is very memorable, and I really appreciated the relationship they had with another major character. And that brings us to... Oh, right, I just realized I completely forgot to mention... Yeah, so the, the cinematographer, Henry Bram, the editing was handled by Jason Ballantine and Paul Macklis. Now, the music was handled by Benjamin Wolfish, who has... 47 credits as composer and I am not sure I know any of this other stuff um, yeah um, anyway oh right right hidden figures yeah he he did both of the it movies so the yeah good working relationship between him and the director ooh blade runner 2049 very cool and Jazam hellboy the 2019 one yeah you know he has genre experience and he he understands what is required and Yeah, there's some really great sound design. There's some stuff in the movie that absolutely did not make that noise in real life, if any. And they do a really great job, you know, with, with these... It's extremely important with these, you know, really wild concepts that you find in comic books. The moment that it's moving on a screen, it has to make a noise, you know. Otherwise, we're just not going to believe that what we're seeing is, is the real. So, yeah, I really appreciate the effort they put in. I feel like it really worked. Right, about comedy, I, I said most of what I want about the comedy. I guess I would say maybe about half the time I thought that the jokes just didn't really work. The other half, they, they did, and... There's enough good stuff in the movie that works that that didn't completely ruin it for me. 
Now, without end credits, the movie is 2 hours and 13 minutes. But you should watch the 10 minutes of uh, end credits because there is a post credit scene after. Although, uh, yeah, I suppose not everyone is going to want to sit through the, the credits to see it. Um, yeah, if you... I suppose what I will say is it is... It is not necessarily important to see the post credits. It's not one of those where it's like, oh wow, what is that gonna you know, no, not really. Now Yeah, so that brings us to the the best element of this is how the the um yeah, the the heart of the movie, the way that the the emotional through line is handled. That's the best element. The worst aspect is definitely the the comedy, especially the the, the Ezra Miller stuff. It is it is fascinating that like I mean, I forget, did we know that they were a messed up person before the the I forget when exactly we we started hearing you know some of the stuff they were doing but yeah now let's see right so the yeah worst thing according to others is probably the the tonal issues and yeah I was I was worried it would not land the the emotional stuff and that would be too unfocused and largely it exceeded my expectations now yeah the thing I was most looking forward to was the concept and it does fine with that now the trailers definitely give too much away but at the, you know they also do a good job representing the movie um if you yeah but if you if you haven't already watched the trailers you know maybe maybe don't it's it's but i don't blame the movie for that you know the the filmmakers didn't choose to give so much away now the cover and poster give at least a little too much away so that's also something you would want to try to avoid but also give you a good idea of what the movie is like now on rotten tomatoes it has a 70% from critics and a 95% from but there's only a little over 50 there there's over 50 verified ratings from users so that might yeah that sounds very very high to me but you know to each their own anyway the 70 percent for critics there's 164 reviews 114 of them are fresh the average rating is 6.40 out of 10 the average user rating is 4.7 out of 5 wow yeah that that is that's high considering the movie now the on Metacritic is that it has a 60 out of 100 based on 37 critic reviews 24 positive 12 mixed one negative and yeah the 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 one negative says it's more interested in goosing empty calorie nostalgia than telling an original or thrilling story and it's that's definitely an issue with the movie now it does not currently have a um, no it, it doesn't have of uh, an IMDB user rating yet and there are currently 23 IMDB user reviews uh, 20 if you hide the ones with spoilers 
and yeah, there you know some people are absolutely in love with it. Some people say it's okay. I'm not really seeing any that give it less than a five. Yeah, and and it seems like most of the user reviews are really really positive. Now, let's see. So the there are some really effective stunts in this you know obviously a lot of stuff is CG effects not not um, yeah there are some really really cool stunts though and that brings us to my rating so yeah I am going to give this seven unusual chances to save the world out of ten. And it is... Yeah, it's, a, it's above Black Adam, but below Wonder Woman 1 for me. And that brings us to the spoiler section so from here on out you know I know not everybody has watched the movie yet so if you haven't please stop watching here I will be spoiling everything you're gonna you're gonna really kick yourself if you if you allow me to spoil you know this movie for you if if you have any interest in watching it at all and since you just watched the review I'm gonna go ahead and assume you do so starting with notes taken while watching so yeah actually I, I will start with the post credit scene because I ended up writing that on the front of my notes here so yeah uh, Flash found supposedly Aquaman but he's getting drunk so I guess it's an Arthur Curry who looks like the Arthur Curry we're familiar with but isn't Aquaman because well there was the thing about like his father could drink more than he could but we've never seen him this drunk I maybe it's I mean there's there's a lot of points of this movie that kinda of feel like the movie is its own parody you know the, the it opens with the the opening credits being interrupted by a by a joke so yeah um yeah i i guess it's saying you know well like let's be honest if aquaman drank as you know drank like a fish like he's seen to do in the other movies he would you know basically be collapsing like he does here i like when barry calls him bro sidon and yeah you know um i can't believe i'm blanking on his name um i'll have it momentarily jason momoa is a good sport about the the joke now the yeah, so so we the opening of the movie we get the flash version of the opening logos and the intro scene has him, you know, he has to to carbo load and you know, the the sandwich the the girl who usually makes his sandwich isn't there and you know, I I will say I found that some of the more effective like comedy what was the the sandwich maker you know i i didn't like i'm not saying he should have been in way more of the movie because how would that have made sense but i did feel like that worked that wasn't pushing it too far cuz he talks the way regular people do you know that that was like funny and it is this thing of like they're they're kind of you know it's a little exaggerated but yeah we've all been around people who like you know obviously treat service workers well but you know sometimes it's like okay I know you have an anecdote I I get that but I really you know I have to hurry 
I'm I'm super hungry. You just you know, and and the the just yeah, that was. I I felt like that was the first time it worked. That that joke that they keep trying to do with the Flash in these in the DCU with the oh you know he needs to keep eating or you know. I, I did think the, the thing in, I think it was the theatrical cut of, of Justice League, when he's like, I don't know if this is the best time to say this, but I'm feeling like my blood sugar is low. You know, that that was a little funny. Also, uh, you know, because it was in the middle of this tense situation. But but yeah, you know, it, it worked with the, you know. Okay, so I'm guessing that means peanut butter, or, you know, and... and Barry goes through yes, and the banana and and raisin and the uh, oof, someone's running a marathon. Yeah, my sister ran a marathon. Rest her soul. I, I mean, she's she's still alive, but it took a toll on her. You know that that was pretty funny. And I I like you know I I don't think I wrote it down, so I'll do it here. But the you know when when Flash comes back from saving all those people, you know, guy turns around and says. Was that fast enough for you? <laughs> and it's like, mm, no, not really. Um, but, you know, not everybody is superhumanly fast. And let's see. Yeah, I, I like that we learned that Barry was not the first pick or even the second. You know, that was my first thought. That was also my first thought. You know, and just yeah, he's the he's the Justice League janitor, and you know he's he's trying to to do the the signature, you know, stand like that and speed off, and the title starts to form over you know, and then he's dealing with fangirls. Uh, I love you. It's, um, he, you're nice too, <laughs> because you know, it's it's not it's not like he can just shout back. I love you too. You know that would be super irresponsible, but he can't like just be like, "Thanks." You know he has to say something. So so that that I felt like worked. And the thing with you know one of them has like a chocolate bar, and he's like, "Okay, um, are you gonna eat that chocolate bar? Because otherwise, you know." And you know then then patching patching Mr. Wayne through, and it, no, please don't. You know, and he turns, and the, the chocolate bar hits him on the head. There really is a chocolate bar down there. And, yeah, so they do the, the long take of the run. Good idea. Wish the effects were done. And... Yeah, so the... the um, yeah, the Batman car chase, I, I thought, worked now... You know the the yeah I'll 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 get to that later right and then there's the the thing with the the yeah some some babies are put in danger which look I get it the there's been a lot of these movies you gotta top them I really did not find that to be in good taste I I really thought that was that was pretty gross. You know, just, I get it, we've seen buildings collapse a thousand times in these movies. You know, we've we've been watching that happen for decades now, but babies, I, I just feel like that's crossing a line. And and then, like, right after, there's the, the bit where we're supposed to worry that the Batman car chase is going to injure school children. So, like, I mean... I'd like to think the script went through more than one draft, I guess. At some point, someone forgot to take out one of these, like, babies, no, not babies, or the, the bus of school children, but not both. That's just ridiculous. And the, yeah, the baby shower, that was really, really, yeah. You know... Horror director, what are you going to do? I mean, I haven't watched the It movies, but I am aware in the new ones. I've, I've watched the miniseries, the, the Tim Curry, uh, you know, but 
I am aware, you know, those also endanger children, so, yeah, this is, this is the kind of thing that you end up with in, in that kind of, but, yeah, I, I did like that, you know, it was kind of funny that he's not, at first, he's not saving the babies, he's carbo-loading, you know, he gets the, the, what's it called, um, the fridge without a door, and, you know, gets a bunch of, of carbs, and then he saves the babies. That was legitimately, uh, and and that's also, you know, like, I felt like that was a, a decent way. I, I don't know if it should have been played quite as comedically, th th I, you know, like I said, I laughed, but that is something you need to do with this kind of thing. You have to, because kids is like, well, if he's that fast, where's the where's the danger? Like he can always make it in time, you know, but. His weakness is he has to, to take in a lot of carbs in order to keep doing what if he runs out of carbs. You know, that was that was a, a good... I really appreciate that. And, yeah, basically, you know, some of the time when he's running, they do the Fox X-Men Quicksilver sequence thing. I mean, it's not... I, I no longer take any joy in praising anything that sex offender I can't believe I'm blanking on his name what what is it with me and names right now um Brian Singer does but I mean they were better in the X-Men movies than they are here I gotta say the the nurse gave me a real Elaine Carroll vibe but I don't think that is actually her, though that would be very cool. Um, let's see, so if we see... Oh, uh, there is no char a character that, according to IMDb at least, that is Nurse. Um, yeah, I don't... Yeah, it's it probably is not actually... Elaine Carroll. Now, yeah. So at one point in the in the car chase, there's like a big fireball explosion, and then Batman comes out of that. I'm not saying that that was invented for the Batman, the the Robert Pattinson movie. I'm just saying, that movie just did it, and did it so much better, you know, so just, like, I, I really think it would have been smart to, to, you know, yeah, not remind people of, of that scene when, when you can't top it at all. Like, there's stuff in the Batman that you've seen in other Batman movies, but it's so much more impressive. So, but but here, just, yeah. I, I quite liked, you know, Wonder Woman saves Batman, and then the Lasso of Truth has Batman, and also Barry, admit really embarrassing truth. Like, just, you know... I have issues with the the choices that Ben Affleck has made in his life. He's clearly done some really scuzzy things, uh, but the man can can you know put on a smile and like deliver you know like you know Wonder Woman's like you're welcome, and and Ben Affleck Batman stand there. I have way too frail of an ego to say thank you. So, uh, oh, um, I mean, I am. The reason I fight crime is because of my childhood trauma. What is this thing? I should just give all my money away. It's just absolutely love that. And and Barry, I think Barry only says the one thing, but it is the epically embarrassing. I know what sex is, but I've never had it. And then, you know, Wonder Woman's like flying, you know, yeah, she's she's leaving the scene. He's like, it was a metaphor. I was talking about, like, 
gothic architecture. Yeah, there's no coming back from that one. And I, I appreciate, you know, the, the, you know, Gal Gadot can do this in her sleep at this point. But yeah, I really appreciate, you know, it's just, Lasso of Truth never gets old. And... Yeah, we see that Barry is late for work, and he's still getting coffee, and we have the thing with, you know, after all these years, you shouldn't still be getting people coffee. Now get me a coffee, and he's like, uh, oh, no. And, yeah, I like the scenes between Barry and Iris, and I really appreciate, you know, at, at first, she's like, not very delicate about the very delicate subject and then later she's like oh I am so sorry I wasn't really thinking you know and the just yeah that whole thing was was really great and yeah so the the they talk about um um Barry no yeah actually yeah at the at first he talks with with Iris about the appeal for his father and the death of his mother and then he talks to his father and the father just really wants him to get a girlfriend which like it's it's kind of sweet it's it's very very like I don't know if it's specifically dad but it's very parent like how how is your per personal life are you doing good you please try to take care of yourself you know kind of thing and, you know, his father delivers the devastating line, you know, at least if I'm stuck in this cell, I could pretend that she's still alive and happy out there somewhere. That was, yeah. And, yeah, so we get a flashback to the mother's death. I gotta say, I kind of thought that the movie would end, that before the movie had ended, we would know who attacked and killed his mother you know I, I actually thought maybe it's even like you know did it turn out to be someone significant that did it to make sure that he got that that he had the motivation so that like one of those like to fix the timeline you have to do extreme things kind of thing or something but by the end of the movie we still have no idea it's just you know and let's see the yeah so at first he's running because he's frustrated but then he also realizes that he can travel in time and i really i i i hate to say it but i wish that the i get it i get why they chose the design that they did. If the effects were done, it would look amazing, but they never are. Every time he enters the the area where he can see, you know Yeah, he can he can I guess he's like pausing time and looking at what happened at this exact moment in time kind of thing. You know, I I wish that they had chosen something where they could, you know, yeah, but it's it's a cool design, and it feels ripped right out of a comic book, which you shouldn't do because that's not good for the material, but I appreciate the effort. Our scars make us who we are. I would not take back Gigli. And... Right, I yeah, I like that, you know, so, so yeah, Iris comes back and it's like... Can we, you know, can I come in and he's, you know, and he speeds up there and, and, you know, tidies up really fast. And she comes on and she's like, I didn't think it would be this tidy. And she's like, I'm a tidy person. And then, you know, clearly he just shoved all of the stuff that was out, you know, into this, like, it well, two closets. And one of the closets burst open and stuff falls out. And a little later in the scene happens with another... Yeah, that was kind of funny. And the, here are some beers from my fridge. And he opens it and it sprays all over him. And 
yeah, you know, he's basically made up his mind to he he wants to warn his his parents or his let's see, warn his mother. And yeah, that brings us to yeah, you know, he goes back in time and puts tomatoes in the shopping cart and it's legitimately you know this very tender moment and I, I'm glad they went back to it later and a figure punches him out of time as he, yeah he's seeing these birthdays that his mother was still alive for I like the you know the the his father is like Barry is early what universe is this because this, you know that is the kind of thing like, it's it's it is let's appreciate the effort here that is like quantum level dad joking and the guy doesn't even realize how perfect what he just said is because, like, literally, the universe that he's in, that Barry would never be early. But here's a Barry from another universe changing this universe by his very presence. Yeah, that's, that's very nicely done. And Barry meets... See, I've I've decided that I want to call him Ezra Flash. Or I suppose maybe Ezra Allen. Because what we're dealing with is a version of the character who has clearly been you know given more positive attention than they could handle. So they've started acting really erratically and like actually downright harmful really really selfish at times so I feel that it just fits to refer to this character as Ezra Allen and I appreciate Barry getting you know, realizing how annoying it is to talk to a Barry Allen <laughs> and Ezra Allen doesn't even do his own laundry And then we have the, yeah, you know, this is the day that, you know, I, I get my powers, and if you don't get them, maybe I lose them, so it's, yeah, those, and, you know, hit by lightning, and then, it's, I, I did kind of find it funny when, you know, <laughs> runs directly into a wall twice hoping to phase through it and then he's like running in a circle and and we see just how goofy it looks when he's running like that if he doesn't it's, yeah so so that was yeah and yeah we realize that now Ezra Allen is the one who has powers and Ezra goofs off using powers, causes a car crash, and we get Zod and the TV message. And we, we learn that Barry saved the kid, but not his father. And I am not going to pretend that I because we we see that again later we see the two of them I guess that's yeah yeah the the payoff to that I was about to say I don't know what the payoff to that even is but the payoff is of course that the you know, that's how it starts with this idea of 
you know, can he actually, um, can he, you know, does he feel like he's saving enough people? That's right. It's Ron Livingstone, Livingston playing the the father of the yeah Peter from Office Space. I knew I'd seen him somewhere. Anyway, um, I like that. Like this is a universe where Eric Stoltz actually did play Marty McFly in Back to the Future, rather than being replaced with Martin Martin. Uh, Michael J. Fox, that's it. And apparently it's still an amazing movie. And so, yeah, using Google, Barry realizes there's no cyborg, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and it's not his Batman. I gotta say, um, I really, 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 really loved... It was probably my favorite... Like, if we're talking, like, acting other than, like, the scenes of, of Barry and his mom, you know, the, the part, the, the bit of acting that I enjoyed the very most was Michael Keaton playing a crazy person version of Bruce Wayne, who, when he realizes that people are breaking into his mansion, hides in a cupboard, waits for the, you know, and, and he's, like, looking out of the, the little, you know, and, and when they've got their backs turned, you know, he opens and, and hops onto the table and tippy-toe, tippy-toe, and, you know, just attacks. That was really, really funny. Um, just, yeah, and, and then he's, like, explaining how this is not Back to the Future 2 rules, you know, it's it's not the the you know one divergent point in time. It's it's you know instead a complete you know re reset kind of thing. And he's using spaghetti, and then he like pours the finished spaghetti, and he's like, and then it's a complete hot mess as he pour, pours the the tomato sauce. You know, what's what's the cheese? The cheese is just garnished. The metaphor is over. You know, that it's just yeah. Um I would I would very much like a feature length movie that is literally just Michael Keaton as crazy old ex Batman Bruce Wayne in his mansion just dealing with weird crap going on. Like that that was so funny. Like I was just like, can this can this just be the rest of the movie? Because this is the this is so good. Just like, and and honestly, I have to wonder if like that was how they got Michael Keaton to come back, because it is like Michael Keaton is the, the you know he he does like this kind of of thing of you know. Acting like a, a crazy, you know, like I was watching it with a friend of mine. And he pointed out, you know, Michael Keaton did a lot of improv for, um, crap, I can't believe I'm playing, uh, uh, Beetlejuice, you know. So just, yeah, I could, I could absolutely see how the the. Ah, uh, let's see. I'm not okay. It doesn't seem to say in the IMDb trivia whether or not <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan joked that Michael Keaton was stealing his job from him in the Flashpoint comic book. The alternate Batman Barry meets his Thomas Wayne, Bruce's father, who became Batman after Bruce was murdered. Morgan played Thomas Wayne in Batman v Superman. So yeah, that's. I could definitely, I mean, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I'd, you know, I'd be up for seeing him in pretty much anything at this point. Now, I, I will say it was kind of funny when, you know, they, they ask, you know, Michael Keaton, will you help us? Pass. P pass, pass like what? 
pass the pass the sauce? What do you mean pass? That was you know also because like the framing and the music is queuing it up as the big hero moment where he's gonna make some kind of affirmative statement, but then yeah. And Barry gets very angry at Ezra it's Alan, which, you know, yeah, thank you for, you know, speaking for the audience. And we actually find out that Michael Keaton's Batman, you know, like this world, Gotham is extremely safe. So you're telling me that without Ben Affleck, Things are much better? Yeah, that checks out. Let's see. I'm kidding. He's done some really good direction and acting. The ejector seats bit is kind of fun, and I like Batman rescuing Barry and Ezra because they are very good at screwing up when they get to the, the, yeah, and, yeah, they were, they were looking for Kal-El and find Kara, yeah, the, the Batman action in this movie is just not as good as Robert Pattinson, the Batman, and I mean, I get it. Everybody wants to see more Michael Keaton as as Batman, so I don't know. I guess it just it would have been good if at at the very least, if if it was more of like a a tag team combo kind of thing, uh, you know, instead of just temporarily, it's just Batman fighting for a little bit. And, yeah, they make several jokes about how Batman's tech is now really, really old with the, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna set the charge and, it, like, it's a, it's a tape measure and then he asks how heavy they are. It's just, yeah. And, and there was the thing with, you know, he's, he's got the, the, what do they call it? flip phone. It's, yeah. And it was very cool. You know, Kara gets into the sun, gets her powers back, and they did a really great job on, like, before that, she looked just completely emaciated, and, like, her skin is so pale, just, you know, but then they, they get her in the, and, and, like, her hand is, is in the shot, and, like, slowly, you know, and, and she flies into the background, they're shooting at her, and she takes them out, very, very badass. I'd really like to see more of of Kara. Um, I don't know if, and and apparently uh, actress Sasha Kelly is is up for more. Like it's, yeah, she's she's really really cool here, and this is apparently like the first feature film she's appeared in. Yeah, there is a Supergirl in development where she's playing the character again, but we'll see. Um, yeah, she's done some TV, uh, yeah, a couple of TV things, a bunch of shorts. Yeah, you know, she, I, I really, really liked her, uh, you know, in, in this, and come on, the DCU is way too dude heavy, let's, let's get some more women in. And, yeah, we learned that she was supposed to protect Kal-El. Solar powered. Good for you. I'm I'm trying to as well. I approve. That was that was funny. I you know, I I'm 100% on board for for green energy, but I can laugh at a joke like that. That was legitimately funny. And she has some some sensory input overload like Cal And so Kara flies off to not help 
because she was in prison. I mean, that is a better reason than the Henry Cavill version ever had. I don't have a problem with him playing the, the role. It was the writing that I really took issue with. And, yeah, it was very sweet, the the heart-to-heart -heart between Barry and Batman, and we see that Ezra did hear what was said, you know, this thing of, that that I thought really, that, that was a moment where the fan service worked. I, I talked about in, in the review, you know, yeah. If, if Batman isn't just showing off how cool he is, isn't just quoting or recreating some cool, iconic shot from one of those two movies, if he's sitting there talking to, to Barry about, you know, the reason I do what I do is because I lost my parents. You know, this, this thing of just, yeah, that, that I felt worked. And Zod and Kara see each other, lock eyes briefly, and then Kara comes right back, and it's like, I mean, I guess at this point, just, okay, um, it is the DCEU, we cannot have a Kryptonian helping people without at least temporarily 100% not helping people. I don't, I don't know, I don't know who's responsible. It's possible it's more than one person. One or more people working on this decided that this movie was going to feature a bat lightning rod. And I am here for it. That was really, really funny. Like, if you're gonna, if you're, like, I mean, the movie legit has Adam West later like it's it's brief and he doesn't make like he doesn't change anything but yeah like let's we can all acknowledge like i'm a fan i i put right up behind me i put one of the comics of the it's it's a jla comic i i've i've got like probably at least a dozen batman comics you know i put up the jla one since you know more members of the JLA in this one than just Batman, but like sometimes it gets pretty silly. So so yeah, that that was yeah. Cause I just like they didn't have to do that. Like they could have just had like oh a uh, lightning rod. I don't know. I don't really. I'm Batman. Why would I have a lightning rod? I guess we can scrape something together. But no, no, no. Like it has the bat symbol. You know, at some point. He and or Alfred, R.I.P. Michael Go. At some point, they sat down like, you know what we're gonna need one day? We're gonna need a bat lightning rod. So let's make. I mean, let's not pretend that there was nothing silly about the two Michael Keaton Batman movies. You know, the 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 Batmobile like it it didn't lose a wheel, but it raised and then turned 180 degrees just to blast a guy instead of I don't know, running him over uh, you know there was there was some pretty goofy shit in those and yeah um Barry did get hit by lightning but it wasn't enough so he's lying there you know, completely messed up go again please but the circuit's fried. It looks very, very painful. And, you know, Kara grabs him, flies him into the cloud. And it does turn out to be to go again. But I did wonder, like, did anybody tell her what they're doing? Or is she just, like, saying, well, I know how, I know how high I can fly and still breathe. I would like to find out how high you can go. And we get a suit-making montage as Ezra Allen makes a, you know, fashions an old bat suit into a flash suit. And it ends on the, the joke of, you know, as he's cutting off the, the ears. 
and you know we get the the detail that you know why why did Barry help Kara because she needed help and yeah we get back to the Kryptonians who are still very cool even if Michael Shannon is absolutely sleepwalking through you know I I I felt like I'm probably gonna butcher this woman's name um Anche Traue a uh, German actress, uh, you know, yeah, she's she's really great in in both of these. You know, I I guess I should start referring to as her as Fa Faora, even though you know me having watched Superman two way too many times as a kid, really really wants to refer to her as. Ah, crap, which one of these is it? There's... Is she the... Ah, Wikipedia will have it. So, Superman 2... You know, it's her and it's non... Um, Ursa, that's it. Let's see. I realize that she's not... You know, Feora is from the comics. I don't know if Ursa is. And yeah, we learn that, you know, Kara has the blood that Zod wants. You know, and Kal-El was killed as a baby. Are you happy now, Warner Brothers? You st All you said you wanted was to remove the mustache, and now Kal-El died as a baby. I, I did like the thing, you know, he's, you've got so much zappy, you know, got all this electricity, I'll just, I'll do an emperor, and just, yeah. And, and the, you know, it's like, you ready? And the music, that was pretty cool. And the Flashes versus the Kryptonians. And, um, Right, yeah, the, um, Batman is shot, and Kara has her blood drained, so they rewind time and save them, but Zod stabs Kara again, and Non takes out Batman, and I did really appreciate, you know, that was, <clears throat> Batman is, of course, not a physical match for non so what he does is he jumps on him puts a, a explosive device and then jumps off and detonates it and then gets back on explosive device detonates it because it's like i mean what am i supposed it worked on the last you know comically large guy you know i i punched him in the face he smiled then i made him look down he saw that i put a bomb on his chest I, I knocked him into a, a hole, explosion, I never saw him again. How was I supposed to know that doesn't work on Kryptonia? You know, he just, he's, he keeps trying, you know, this, this same, I, I did kind of like, because, because it is, you know, that was the, it actually, there was this joke that, ah, uh, was it college humor, was it, was it one of the, it, it was, I think it was an animated bit on, on like, um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, ma pointing out, you know, Batman fights these very human, you know, they're, they're like, if they're not human, it's usually because they're like, psychologically, you know, but like Superman fights these that are like literally superhuman. So if Batman tried to fight, you know, yeah. Now let's see that. Yeah, so so the we see Ezra Allen become evil, selfish. You know, he he says that you know he wants to keep being a superhero kind of thing, and I did wonder, at, you know, at at this point, I wondered, does this mean that Ezra Allen was the figure that? you know, pushed 
Barry into, you know, 18-year-old Ezra's life, but we, you know, not long after we do meet the that actual figure, and it is a future, you know, Ezra has, you know, who's tried saving, you know, them all, you know, for for extremely long time, and Christopher Reeves appears, which feels like kind of distasteful. He's been dead. Yeah, and the, the, ah, uh, it feels disrespectful. I'm really quickly going to get, because that movie is also called Supergirl, ah, uh, Helen Slater? Yes, Helen Slater, Supergirl, appears, and I want to say George Reeves, Superman shows up, Adam West, Batman, and... I, I really hope I I've does anyone know did Nick Cage know he would be in the flash um yeah I'm not I I uh Oh, here we go. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. Um, according to Muschietti, Nick was absolutely wonderful. Although the role was a cameo, he dove into it. And, um, let's yeah, I mean, that is... It is really cool. Um, yeah, so... Superman lives... And he's and he's he's fighting the giant spider, which you know the the if you if you watched Wild Wild West, first of all, shame on you, especially if you did more than once because you should know better. You might have noticed that there is a giant spider in that movie, and you might have wondered why. We all wondered why and then it came out that one of the producers for the ironically named Superman lives which died and and has no you know yeah that movie was supposed to have Superman fighting a giant spider that was something that producer was 100 percent married to and apparently that was one of the reasons that, that, like, because he kept insisting, no, giant spider, he has to fight that, you know. They were like, what are we going to do with this guy? Okay, sorry, no, I'm, I'm not going to make that movie, you know. But yeah, here we go. We actually, we actually got it. That was, that was very fun. And... Let's see. Yeah, the, the figure accidentally kills Ezra Allen and ceases to be because he is a future version of Ezra Allen and yeah so if, let's see it's, yeah back in time for a second time we get very back to the future too with the yeah and Barry talks to his mother for that one last time and she even gives him a hug and you know there's that thing about you know I'm lucky to have her tell her that mom's like to hear that you know it's like it is it is easily the single most emotional tomato can removal scene that I've watched all day but yeah it was it was legitimately sweet it was very emotionally affecting that's why I'm making these really immature jokes because we are told here in the West to hide our emotions yeah and and I do like the you know this last time it's not going to be back and forth so he just says even though she doesn't respond I love you 
I loved you first. It, right, I love you, I love you more, I loved you first. That That's how it goes. And he's late to the court date. It's, yeah, so we realize he couldn't save his mom, but he did get his dad out of jail, at least here at the end. You know, he, he was able to, you know, he, he put the the tomato can on a just yeah and I did like the you know he's like asked do, do you have a statement the tomato can was on top and that's why the spaghetti d d disappeared you know that makes no sense I can we put that in more movies can we have more movies just acknowledge that made no sense and you know Barry talks to to Batman, and you know he's like, oh, I'm I'm driving up to you now. Oh, cool! And you know doors open, people and and it's George Clooney playing Batman one more time, and we end on a joke, which for this movie really like what else would have made sense? But yeah, um, George Clooney has a sense of humor about himself. He knows that everybody hated his his Batman. And that's the, you know, that's that's the joke. Like, nobody wants him to be Batman kind of thing. So that was, yeah. Um, I don't think that I have more to say. I found it... Oh, right, there's, an, there's another section. That's right. So, final section... Notes taken before watching, so just kind of there we go. And let's see. Yeah, right. I I noted about the the tr yeah the trailer released mid February looks good. I am a little worried that there isn't enough other DCEU to do this kind of thing. With alternate timelines the way that the MCU had a lot of it for Endgame and What If. And yeah, ultimately they don't really... Like essentially Man of Steel is the only DCEU thing. Other than that they, they take... Yeah, and, and that is, you know, the, essentially the climax is Man of Steel but with Kara instead of Kal-El... And Batman and the the two Flashes as as backup and yeah it isn't quite <coughs> it isn't quite enough now let's see right I copied in IMDb Rotten Tomatoes Metacritic links on the twentieth of February and for them it brought up the TV show The Flash before the movie The Flash which does not speak well for how excited people were at the time. Now, when Michael Keaton as Batman popped up, he does, of course, turn some heads. Hopefully, finally, his own as well. Two berries. What can we possibly have done to deserve such harsh punishment? And yeah, this movie does have Barry frustrated with his younger self. Like in Time Cop 1, Men in Black 3, like... Show these screenwriters some love, because they apparently really feel like they mu they they that if they met their younger self, they would really really resent them. So just yeah, and yeah. So you know, I in in some ways this is similar to the two Spider Verse movies. I suppose it's maybe not fair to compare it to the second one, so we'll just stick to the first one and Spider-Man No Way Home more so than Endgame. And I would definitely say that those, you know, Spider-Verse 1 and Spider-Man No Way Home are definitely better. They're more focused on the the protagonist, although I will grant that is an issue in some of the last chunk of the first Spider-Verse movie. You know, and, and I'm not going to claim that Spider-Man No Way Home has a ton of screen time for every single yeah no you know what i was no 
Honestly, they do a much better job. Every single major character in Spider-Man No Way Home has some presence where here, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, Michael Keaton, um, Sasha Kale as Kara, Michael Shannon, Anche Traue, Yeah, like, uh, uh, you know, these are, these characters do not really have very much screen time and, like, yeah, it, it just, I, I don't think that, you know, the, the, yeah, can, you know, there's, there are fewer major characters in this movie than there is in Spider-Man No Way Home, and yet Spider-Man No Way Home does a better job making sure that all of them have something really important to, to say and to do. Now... And yeah, you know, the it is somewhat similar to... Hmm... Let's go with other movies that have this kind of time travel shenanigans. You know, they think they can do time travel and, and you know, save a lot of people, but they end up creating a new enemy. Now, uh, yeah, so some critic quotes. Uh, too little of Zod, very true. And... Yeah, so this... Uh, yeah. The opening action set piece alone bears the loose, simple excitement that the DCU had from day one, but much of the lightness comes from the endlessly fascinating alternate Barry, a wiry, excitable himbo who would clearly rather be chowing down on a sandwich than hear another word about the multiverse, Miller doing their own odd couple shtick, with the more mature Barry bickering back and forth with his slacker doppelganger within the same scene is a pretty impressive high-wire act to hinge an entire film on, and Miller proves themselves capable of the task, with the script giving them an assist near the finish line, tying Alt Barry's willful ignorance and perpetual impulse control problems against the climax in a genuinely smart way, even despite being saddled with the baggage of the DCU's failures. That the story works in the Flash manages to shine through the noise is no small feat. The bitter irony, of course, is that even its artistic victories are temp by, tempered by the film being released in the shadow of uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which hits nearly every story beat and big swing for nostalgia attempted here, but with exponentially more finesse, grace, and emotional power. Nothing Batman or Supergirl do in the Flash can save the, to save the world is more effective than what Barry does to save it with a hug and a can of tomatoes. Very true. So yeah, um, that's it for this video. Let me know what was your favorite part of this movie. Yeah. What do you hope they do with Sasha Kali as Kara? How how do they bring her back? Because there's, you know, it's difficult. Were you surprised that this didn't have, like, you know, they were talking about, oh, this is going to reset the DCEU. I mean, it doesn't really. They They actually just go, he goes back to the time he was in, except now Batman is played by a different actor. But, you know, Iris is still there, his father's still there, yeah. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler filled thoughts on the most recent episode of True Lies that hit Disney Plus here in Western Europe, at least. The Clearing and the most recent episode I've personally gotten to of Scream Queens. I also do videos talking about Star Wars. I'm working my way through the animated Star Wars right now. And once they start putting new stuff on Disney+, Plus, that's Star Wars and MCU, I will do that as well. Recently, we've been thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalogs. Let's catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.